this is a direct result of last year's conference and a great talk given by Dr. Craig uh, from A&M. And he actually put and demonized with personality these worms. Okay, and I thought it was awesome. You know what I mean? And, and, <laughs> and he's just as good to interact with on a regular basis. The guy's just really there to help, you know. He's one of, uh, somebody else will know this better than me, but he's quite noted as a parasitologist in the world, is he not? I mean, not just by A&M, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so he's a big guy and he still has time for us and our poor little bison in this program. So when you send your fecal samples, which we're going to show you how to put those up, uh, into A&M and, and encode it with, uh, well, I don't need to read it all to you. You have it to read. But this is for the purpose of gathering data for the herd. Okay? That's why Jim's here with the NBA. That's why the TVA exists. You're benefiting your herd. Okay, with information. And if you want to stop it there, no problem. You know, that's fair in business. But in this bison community, we tend to want to work for the herd too. Okay? And we help ourselves when we do. When we help the NBA be better, we help ourselves. We help our own herd. When we help the TBA, we help our own herd. Okay? When you help your neighbor with Buffalo, you're helping your herd. Okay? And so that's why. I uh, put this program together with Dr. Craig, and if you will encode your requests on this worksheet, which I can email to you if you need it, and so can Dr. Craig, TXBP, Texas Bison Parasitology, then your data goes into a database for collection. We start to see some things that we didn't know before. That trickles down to our local veterinarians, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you get a guy that's helping you that's a veterinarian that says, well, yeah, for cattle we usually do this one. When they start talking like that with me, I'm just like, yeah, but this is Buffalo and it's totally different. Even Dr. Craig, when he stood up in front of our group, first thing he said was, we don't know anything. What occurred to me at that moment is that what's wrong with us? Why does he not know more about this? Okay. And Jason, it's really great that you worked with him. And if you request your information to be coded TXB for this project, I'm sure Dr. Craig would be more than happy to put it in there. Okay. But confidentiality is a big deal to a lot of people. And so your name's not attached to it. You know, your county will be. And that's, that's really important. But so that's the purpose of it. And I've got on, uh, so, okay. Fecal samples is on. Is that on that slide? Yes. So that's the that's the first thing you need to know about. And I know I'm running low on time, but think what you need. Okay. So how do we? Our bison can't talk to us unless we know how to look at them, understand what they're telling us. Okay. And past that, we have windows where we can go in and find out what's going on inside of them. Okay. This test is going to include something really cool. So, everywhere I go, I carry this toolbox, which consists of one gallon uh, plastic baggies. Because, you know, I might be a poop on your shoes guy, but I don't like poop on my hands. Okay, so the reason I like the big bag is because the way you, you do it is you invert the bag and. Oops, Stick your finger through the hole and but anyway, <laughs> throw it away. <laughs> but anyway, and then you have a glove, okay? And next, if come on, I have a constipated buffalo here. These are, oop, that really set up. I was worried about it setting up. So anyway, uh, you can practice this at home with your own oatmeal if you want. But. So take it, and I, again, overboard on everything when it comes to a biological sample that I'm going to try to help keep my buffalo alive with, okay? So I'll take and I'll kind of give it a swirl or two. That's really stupid if you ask a parasitologist because he says the same amount of eggs is in every single gram of that manure. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. So I pick it up, invert it like that. Now here's the really important part. 
zip it. Yeah, close the bag. <laughs> <laughs> then, but really important, press the air out of it. Okay? And then zip it shut. Okay? The bigger belly you have, the easier it is to do. And so you have a fecal sample. Equally important, this is a cool pack you can get from your veterinarian, just a whatever, you know, standard cool pack, but it's better than ice because it doesn't get all over the place. Have the cooler on site when you collect, okay? Put the bag in the cooler, close the lid. You've now preserved that biological sample as good as it can be done, and keep it cool or refrigerated until you ship it off or take it, and when you take it to your veterinarian, request that they keep the same uh, preservation of the sample in place. Cool, dark, dark is a big deal. So the things that will hatch parasite eggs are light, ambient temperature, and uh, what's the third one? Uh, Moisture. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Water. Well, that won't hatch them. You know, drying out will ruin the sample. So keeping them cool will keep them moist, uh, and keeping them dark inside the cooler will help with the daylight. Okay, and that's the way you do it. And in fact, I got my butt chewed by Dr. Craig yesterday before I came because I'm working with another parasitologist that says, oh, don't worry about all that stuff. Just throw it in if it ships, it fits, deal. You know, throw a cool pack in there and just send it regular mail. And I'm like, well, that's not what I'm trained to do. You know, so I split the samples, sent one to Dr. Craig. I get an email from Dr. Craig saying, please send these overnight. Please put them in a, you know, do all this preparation, which I like, because that's going overboard on keeping that sample good, okay? And I was gonna have, pick on somebody and have them come up and do it, but I think I'm getting, I better keep clicking along here. Does anybody have any questions about har harvesting and preparing fecal samples for shipment? How many Not samples it. for her? That's great, go ahead. It has to go to Dr. Craig to do this, to enter the data into the system because I'm not going to forget about that. I once said how many samples per herd. Um, Dr. Craig, because of uh, my spurs on this program and because he's this kind of guy, I was directed for a company to just get a egg per gram reading and I had uh, seven samples out of 40 head which represented more than 10 percent but it was a good look at that set okay and so your options on the test we'll skip to that a little bit are whether or not to do an egg count you check yes do a cupra culture check yes if you want it and do a <laughs> TV MDL cortisol look, which is not possible, and I found that out yesterday. But it is possible to get a cortisol look out of the feces. Um, the Cooper culture, they'll set up what's known as a Cooper culture and they'll actually hatch these eggs. So not only are we going to find out genus, okay, but we're going to find out species and subspecies of the worms that may be unique to your property, okay? You, get, you got species when you ended up with homonchus, and he probably had a subspecies for you, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how awesome is that? Now, our local vet, what he can do for us is give us an egg count per gram. That still tells us something, okay? And so uh, I'm not saying not to use the local vet, but we're given, if we go in under this program, we're, we're, giving the, we're being given the research price for looking at this manure looking at these bison, which is $10 for a, an egg count and 20 bucks for a group cooper culture. Or if you want... You know, I, I sent it in uh, on Tuesday. It got to him Wednesday. I had a phone call from his lab tech on Thursday morning. Yeah. And he'll email. And on this sheet is a, a way for them to contact you. You know, so... And, and please, if anybody going through this process finds ways to improve it and how it works for everybody, please speak up. Let me know. We'll plug it in. Okay. This is about getting something perfect. Yeah. When in this particular program, are you concerned about identifying that 
you know, this is a heifer, this is a cow, this yep. is a two-year-old cow, this is a... Yep. Right on your animal information per sample, you know, you're going to, if it's a random group, that's one thing. But if it's per sample, we want to have everything possible, including sex, uh, the herd size they're in, uh, age, the county that the samples are taken, everything we can know oh, we want. Okay. I see that. Okay, yeah. Uh, on down to your rotation uh, program and the grass types that you're running on. We want to know that. See, here's the thing about science. Uh, they need information in order to come to any kind of hope to have any actionable science conclusions. And Lauren's back there going, yeah, we've got to have the information, you know, and that's, so, you know, a guy can be anti-science if he wants, which I know a lot of people that are and think they're just a bunch of geeks running around in lab coats, well, you know, yeah, thank God, you know, that's what they're into, that's what they do, that's what they're good at. You know, uh, but they need us in the scientific realm, and they need us to produce stuff like this, okay? And the more we give them the ability to give us science back that means something, I mean that that's huge for our animal, okay? And uh, and but this has not yet been done. Everybody, you know, I, I I saw the problem is that we didn't have enough group data about this animal in the southern plains, but. Hopefully, I'm having one done, hopefully not, but probably will today or yesterday. The post-mortem organ samples are really important. That's going to tell us some things that if you lose one, okay, that has withered away or whatever and you've had worm problems, it's really a good idea to follow this and go ahead and incorporate your vet and send these organs in, okay, because then we know some things. We can prove some things that we think we know now about shedding and damage to the digestive. I can tell you that it differs in bison from cattle. Talk to Doc Hunter about anthrax and how blown away he was on how it affected their inside compared to beef cattle. So this is gonna be like that, okay? And we can dispel some of the perception and paradigms that our veterinary community holds about our animals.